Good morning to you. Welcome to our third to last week. The end is approaching. We have exam number four next week, right? And you're looking forward to it. Let's move it to Wednesday, Thursday. I think it's Monday, Tuesday, on the sheet. So next, so Wednesday, Thursday, next week. Wednesday, Thursday, next week. Not this week, but next week. So we'll end the week with our exam number four. Our last exam other than the final. As you know. The final's only like, what, four weeks from Wednesday. Yeah, 17th of May. All right. We're done with everything except... Trigonometry. All right. It's trigonometry from here to the end. Did you finish up binomial theorem okay? Get all that? Not too bad? Just a pattern, huh? Of course, that's all math, but the patterns get hard. All right. So we're going to do trigonometry. And so the rest of the way, six, we're going to cover six, two, six, three, six, four, seven, one, eight, one. Five sections left. They're all trigonometry. It's a review of trig before you plunge into calculus, right? Math 5A. You will use a little bit of trig in Math 5A, not a lot. If you go to Calc 2, that's where it's trig crazy. So my daughters in Calc 2 right now always tell me, you were right, Dad, but there's a lot of trig in Calc 2. Calc 2, there's a ton of trig. So Calc 1 a little bit, Calc 2 a ton. So, um, all right. So we're going to cover trig. Let's, um, I'm going to use the unit circle approach. I'm, I never care how you do anything. Let's take a look. So find the values of sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotan. If p equals root 3, 2, comma, half is the point on the inner circle that corresponds to the real number t. The real number t. It's kind of a weird way to say that. Hmm. Uh, that's funny. But anyway, so, um, so, let me see. Oh, is my, oh boy. All right. Got to charge my, I don't know why my pencil's dead, but I um, should have been doing that while I was doing my spiel. All right, so while my pencil charges for 30 seconds, let me say this. On, uh, I'm going to make good use of this time. Part one of exam four will be, it's a big announcement, you ready? No calculator at all. Oh, I'm just mean. It's really the bottom line, reason. <laughs> Sorry. I just take a perverse pleasure in torturing you over this. <laughs> all right, no calculator at all. Yeah, I, I believe that it's important to be able to do trigonometry without a calculator, at least the memorized values. And I'll explain what all that means in a minute, and I'll help you memorize that. But yeah, but you can use your 3 by 5 cards. You can write the unit circle on your 3 by 5 card. That's fine, you know. But as far as being able to do trig, without just reliance on the button, button pushing it is, is important because of limits in Calc 1 and stuff you do in Calc 2. You have to really be able to sense and understand what the trig function is doing, not just boom, 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 I hit the buttons, there's the number. Really, that'll hamper you. If, you. if all you know is I hit the buttons and there's the answer, you'll have trouble in some of those, especially limits. Limits in Calc 1 show a direction. So they're not just one spot, like hit the buttons. They're, where's it headed? Where's it going? You'll have no idea if all you've ever done is push the button. But if you've looked at unit circles and thought about what that means about a placement and where that thing's moving, then you'll be able to do that. So, believe it or believe me or not, that's my reason. So the, the first part of example four is going to be all trigonometry stuff then? Exactly. Good clarification question. What I was just going to say myself. It's all trig and only trig. Yeah, so all that other stuff we've done, you know, um, what was it, sequences and series on, you'll be able to use graphic calculator on part two, for all, or your regular calculator, any calculator you want for that stuff, right. It's only trig on part one. Wait a minute, I'm lying to you. <laughs> no, it is for the other class. But you guys, I have to give the exam in two days. I have to give the exam in two days, so it's not only trig for you guys. Our part one practice test only have trig. It is, but it's gonna be different, because I have to break it up different, because I have to give to part one, for the other class, is just like five trig questions. Just like the practice exam, you know, five trig questions. That's all it is, it's about 15 minutes and then they're on to part two for the rest of the way. Well, I can't give you guys 15 minutes and then the rest of the way because we have two 15 minute periods. So I can spend like an hour and a half or two hours kind of dividing things up differently for you guys. So long story short, 
know there's some other stuff too. But it's all stuff you should be able to do without a calculator. I, I was careful to move problems over. Um, I'll, I'll let you know exactly what that is. Oh, in fact, I have it here. That's right. I don't have to guess. I have it here. Because um, I haven't dropped it off of the photocopier yet. And so that's the other classes, part one, part two. That must be theirs. Let's see. This yours? Yeah, so part one. Is this the uh, you guys? Yeah, this is you guys. All right, so yeah, so there's trig. Bunch of trig. Wait a minute, what's that? Oh, that's the first part one. Okay, so there's like two part ones. And then this must really be it, right? 4A part 2 Monday Thursday. What's that? No, that's the wrong one, too. I can't find it. Let me see. I did a bunch of exam writing Thursday. Uh, what is this? This is 4B. I don't know where it is. Using up all kinds of time here. This is it, part. Everything says part two. Why is everything in the world part two? Um, well, I don't know. You're gonna have a bunch of stuff on there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I I think um, part two. No, that that would require. I'm confused. I am sincerely confused. Oh, no, I am going to let you. That's right, that's right. Okay. Well, I forgot what I did. All right. Let me back up everything I said and try one more time. I will give you part one. Trig only. And then I'm just going to trade you on the first day. Yeah, that's what I thought. I remember I was going to do this other thing and then I changed my mind. Yeah, so it will be. In the end, only trig. Yep. Only trig. You'll be just like the other class. I'll just trade you halfway on the first day. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I decided to do. In other words, on day one, you know, on when next Wednesday? Where we at next Wednesday? I'll give you part one, just trig. It'll be like five, six trig questions. What exactly the practice is you have? No calculator at all. And then once you finish that, probably take you 25 minutes, maybe at most. Uh, whatever you want to do. I'll trade you. I'll have another two pages where you can use your graphic calculator, basically the beginning of part two. And then on day two, I'll give you the other four pages of part two. Yeah, so it's the same thing. You're going to be exactly the same as the I'll just have to trade you halfway in the first day. So, long story short, only trig, no calculator at all. Anything else, you got your graphing calculator. So, All right, so let's get back to it. So we do need to learn these without a graphing calculator. So here we go. All right, all right, I'm up and at them now. So all right, so they're giving me a unit circle here, and they got a little point T up here, and they're saying that's the point, root 3 over 2 up a half. In other words, this is over root 3, over 2, up a half, right? It's x coordinate root 3 over 2, y coordinate a half. Right there. They're saying that dot at some angle theta. Who cares? They're not even giving me an angle. Or t. They're calling it angle t. Whatever. Whatever they want to call it. Um, how do you find the sign given a point on a unit circle? Do, do you know that? Now, I'm expecting great things. You've all had trig, right? Very good. Let me write it a little cl more clear up here. Yeah, are you aware that the sign is just the y value on the unit circle? What, what is the unit circle? We keep calling it unit. What do you mean unit? Unit. What does that mean? The unit circle. That means the one circle. The circle of radius one. That's what they unit. Let's be clear on that for a second. We're going to do that for everything. The unit circle is the circle of radius one. Units, one unit. It's radius one. So the unit circle, the radius one circle, when you have a point on the unit circle, the x coordinate is cosine, the y coordinate is sine. So the cosine is the x value on the unit circle. So what's the y value? It's just a half. What's the x value? The root 3. Whoop, okay, get that in there. Root 3 over 2. Okay, so what's tangent then? Yeah, it's, it's always sine over cosine if you want to memorize it that way. Or it's y over x. It's opposite over adjacent. We'll talk more about that later. You probably know all those things. I'm assuming to some level. Maybe a little rusty. It's y over x, so it's the half over the root 3 over 2, right? Remember that? 
It's the y value over the x value. It's tangent. So uh, what do you do with a fraction over a fraction? Give it a flip up. High diver going upside down there times 2 over root 3. These cancel. 1 over root 3. Can't leave a root in the bottom. What do we do? Root 3 over root 3. And that's root 3 over plane 3. Root 3 over plane 3. Is that good? Make sense how we do those? Remember the definitions of the functions? So let me clear some space here. And um, so that's sine, cosine, tangent. So you can write all that. You get your 3 by 5 card in that part once. So you can write all those definitions. You know, sine is y. But I'm fine with that. I'm not into you memorizing as much as being able to crank out values without button pushing. So sine is y, cosine is x, tangent is sine over cosine y over x. So now we can do the flips of those, right? You know what I mean? Like, what's the flip of sine? What's upside down of sine? Cosecant, which is 1 over sine. In other words, 1 over y. So you just take the y value. What was the y value? Here, half, and flip it upside down, 2 over 1 or 2. Good there? Do you know cosecant is upside down of sine? What's upside down of cosine? Secant, 1 over cosine, it's upside down, 1 over x, just flip the x value, right? So root 3 over 2, just flip it, 2 over root 3, can't leave a root on the bottom, multiply top and bottom by root 3, get 2 root 3 over plane 3, yep. and last one, cotan, clearly the upside down of tan, 1 over tan, so just take the tan answer and flip it, 3 over root 3. See, I just flipped the tan answer. The, the tan answer. Now I can't leave a root in the bottom. Multiply root three over root three. Three root three over plane three. Those cancel. Root three. All right. So here we are. We got some time. All right. Secant is sixteen pi. How do you do that without a calculator? Because that's what you're going to need to do on the exam. No calculator at all, part one. And that's important to know because you do this kind of stuff with limits in Calc 1, Calc 2. Okay, Here, here's my approach. I'm going to give you my little thing. I don't care what way, what way you do it, but um, I'll just give you my little thing. So first off, you want to memorize, or write in your 3 by 5 card, three values. Um, it's, and I'll try to make it as easy as I can. Root 1, root 2, root 3, all over 2. And root 1 over 2 is just a half. It's just, I'm just showing it that way so you can see the pattern. It's really, that first one's really a half, isn't it? Square root of 1, nobody leaves it that way. It's really 1 over 2. It's a half. But I want you to see the pattern. Root 1, 2, 3, over, all over 2. What are those? Those are the values we're going to use. This is the small, medium, and large, like ordering a soda or something. Small, medium, and large. Okay, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the unit circle. I'm going to draw the unit circle. Mine looks a little egg-shaped. All right, so the way we do trigonometry, the way everybody does trigonometry this point forward through calculus and beyond, is they memorize three spots in every quadrant. So right in the middle, and then about here and about here. And then same thing, right in the middle and then here and here, and right in the middle and here and here, and right in the middle and here and here. So you memorize three spots in every quadrant. What are those angles? Well, this, this one is, you know, we're talking about opening up to certain, this is, this opens up to 30 degrees. This opens up to 45. This opens up to 60. So we memorize 30, 45, and 60 in every quadrant. This is where the angle starts at zero. This is 90. 180, 270, and then all the way around again, 360s, same thing as zero. It's the same spot. Two ways to say the same thing, right? You remember all this from your tree? Your math 4A or whatever, your high school or wherever? Your tree background? Is that good? So, so what? What about those spots? Well, at each of those three memorized spots, so is everybody good for some? Hey, why, why is all the way around 360 degrees? Why is all the way around 
Yeah, you know, all right. We, we, we've got a homeschool kid here that knows some. My kids are homeschooled, too, so I can, I can kid count. These are actually homeschooled. Yeah. Actually, uh, actually, most of what I know about the Babylonians and circles came from my uh, trade teacher here. Oh, okay. Uh, Mr. Bigham? Yep, or, yep, yep, I tell all my kids to Mr. Bigham, too. He's great. He's the funniest guy in the math department. Anyway, yeah, he's great. So he does it, too, right? Yeah, so where? So where they? Well, why did they come up with three states? Yeah, because it was just made up. First off, you realize it was just made up. They could have made it 100 or 1,000. They just said, hey, all the way around, we'll make it 360. And then, you know, everything else comes from that. Then halfway is 180, a quarter is 90, that's why this is 90. And they just made up the 360. They just made it up. Now, why did they make it up? What do we know? What were the Babylon Babylonians doing? They were doing it calendars and stuff. Yeah. What, what do you know, full circle, that's about 360 in the real world we live in? Yeah, and that's because what does a circle? The sun goes around us. No, other one. We go around the sun. We go pretty, pretty necessary. Right? So we go around the sun close to. Back then, that was their best estimate. 360 days around the sun. We know now it's closer to 365. You know it's not exactly. That's why there's leap year and da 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 da. Well, as far as it goes, all that. You know there's there's just yeah, I know I want to further. You know there's adjustments to leap years every thousand years. Like every four years, you know, you add a day, but then every thousand you take one back because it's anyway, because it's not exactly. Anyway, that's it. I really won't say more about that. So, three, so, so they were estimating 360 back then, so that's why a circle became 360. It was just they were just using astronomy to navigate ships. And so they were just looking at the rotations, and that's when they first used angles with all that. All right. So there's a, remember, I'm a wannabe history teacher, so I have to always give a little history like that. All right. So anyway, so that's where it comes from. They just made it up, just totally made it up like all the rest of math. Um, for things that were useful navigating ships. Okay, so all the way around 360, 360. So that's where we get the half 90 and da 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 da. All right, so this angle's 30. Let me put these back where they were. 45, I just want the lines out of there. It's a 45 and that's a 60. Okay, so what I'm saying then, here's the easy way to do this. I think, I think, this will, I think you'll like this. Lend me your, your minds here. Um, even, if, even if you've done it a different way, watch this. I think this is easy. Just look at those spots. Remember the small, medium, and large. And, and just think about the lines out to those spots. It's really easy to memorize this stuff. If you, to get to this dot, making a triangle, what do you have to do? You have to go way over, over a large amount, oh, what doing? up a small amount. What did I do? I went over a large amount, up a small amount. Whereas to get to the one in the middle, I go over medium, up medium. To get to this one, I go over a small amount, up a large you see what I'm saying? Think about how you go over and up to get to those three dots. And just keep it really simple. Small, medium, large. Nothing more complex than that. What are the small, medium, large? It's those three. It's always those three. A half, really. Root two over two and root three over two. That's the small, medium, and large. That's all it is. So, what am I saying? I'm saying, I'm going to keep drawing and racing, drawing and racing here. Um, what I'm saying then, if you, want, if you were like here at 30 degrees, and somebody asked you, what's the sign of 30 degrees? What I'm saying you should do is you should go, look, okay, 30 degrees on the unit circle is over a large amount, up a small, right? So it's over a large, up a small. X, Y, over, up. Okay, what's the large? Well, it's root 3 over 2, right? It's 1, 2, 3. Over, and what's the small? 1, 2, 3, it's a half. Okay, so what's that mean about the sign? What's the sign then of that spot, of that 30 degrees? Well, what did we just say about sine? Sine is always the y value. So it's a half. We're done. Sine of 30 is a half. That's, that's what it is. That's how we do the sine of 30. I know when I finished trick, if somebody had said to me on the street, if somebody had stopped me on the street and said, hey, you're in taking the college level math classes, what, what is the sine or the cosine or the tangent? Like, what is it? What, what really is it? I mean, I would have said, I have no idea. You know, I can give you the sine of 30, cosine of what, give me an angle, I can give it to you. I memorized them and learned them. But like, what it is in the real world? Like, what is the sine and the cosine of the tangent? I mean, what really are they? Can you taste them and touch them and smell? What are they? I would say, I have no idea. It's funny looking back now. I just, if math was just all kind of floaty to me, you know? I mean, what is it? What, what, what is sine and cosine of the tangent? Well, I mean, we're, we're using a unit, this, this you, you could say in a sense it's spots on a unit circle. That's sort of true. I mean, that's, what I'm, that's the way I'm giving you about one of the easiest ways to memorize them. 
But it's not really spots on a circle. And then, like, what, what, did, what did they use sine, cosine, and tangent for? Yeah, they made it up, like all the rest of math, right? They just made it up. Why? To just give some college math students something else to do and fill out the curriculum and give me a job? It's used. It's used in computer engineering. They do use it not a lot. What in the real world do they do with that engineering and that stuff? With sine, cosine, and tangent? Waves. Yeah, any, waves is perfect. Anything that goes up and down, up and down. All kinds of things in the real world. The alternating current, AC, coming right out of that plug right there, right? That current doesn't come in steady like a battery. That's a direct current. It's just steady. Wall current, alternating current, is a sine curve. Up and down, up and rises and falls. The power coming out of the wall. Then, you know, you go to the ocean. You know, when I go to the ocean, I like to look at the tide chart to find out when it's out. Take my kids out to grab the shells while the uh, tide is out, right? Where, where do you get those tide charts? Well, you know, the moon pulls the waves in and out, in and out. So how do they, they want to write equations for that. It, tons of things in the real world in which we live rise and fall, come forward and backwards. Whenever you have something cyclical like that, do you know what you use to model that behavior? It's the trick functions. That's all they are. That's all the trick functions are, sine and cosine, are just, all the rest come from sine and cosine, right? You remember that? The tangent comes from sine and cosine, and all the rest are flips of everybody, right? So they all come from sine and cosine. What are sine and cosine? Well, they're just, well, what does this dot do as you go around the circle? It rises and it falls. It rises and it falls. That's all we're doing. That's all sine and cosine are. It's something to represent things in the real world that rise and fall, rise and fall. It's just a very convenient way to do that for engineers and people that need real life applications using that. All right, so with that said, that's why unit circle is one good way to represent these trig values. So what if I was, say, at 45 degrees, and somebody asked me, what's the cosine of 45 degrees? What would I do? I would say, well, I would, I would just, you can picture it in your head, you can draw it in your paper. It's over medium, up medium. Right? The 45 is always right in the middle. So the medium goes with medium. The small and the large always go together, one way or the other, and the medium goes with medium. So over medium, up medium. So that must mean this is the spot over root 2 over 2, up root 2 over 2. Remember, it's 1, 2, 3, so the 2 is the medium, huh? And they're all over, over 2. They all have a 2 in the denominator. So that's the 45-degree angle, this 45-degree angle. So what's the cosine? What's the x? Whoops, that's not a 3, it's a 2. It's root 2 over 2, and then we're done. The, what would be the sine of 45? Same thing, because the x and the y are the same here, right? So as this dot goes around the unit circle, the x value at any moment is the cosine. And the y value, the height at any moment, is the sine. That's all they are. That, well, that's an easy way to represent them. Sine and cosine are just x and y values. Let's, um, I probably shouldn't have erased that. So um, let's go here. Let's go to, uh, what is that, 60 degrees? So how about 60 degrees? And what if somebody asked me the, let's go to the cosine. What's the cosine of 60 degrees? So you take this dot, which is at 60 degrees, right here, and think about how far over and up is it over? What is it over? Small, medium, or large? It's over a little bit. Small and up a lot, huh? Right? Small and large go together. Medium goes with medium. So it's over, small, up, large. So it's over. It's x value is small, which is a half. It's y value is large, which is the 3, right? 1, 2, 3. Root 3 over 2. All right, so what's the cosine? What's the x value? Half. Done. So that's all you got to do. Same thing for the negatives. We'll get to those in a minute. Now, let's answer questions to that point. Let's answer, feel free to jump in if you have questions. Let's answer the, their actual question. Secant of 16 pi. First off, what is secant? The upside down of? Cosine. So secant of, so you've got to have that memorized or put it on your 3x5 card. That's 1 over the cosine, right? So you've got to be clear on that first off. 1 over the cosine. It's, you, it's all in terms of sine and cosine. So in other words, go now, now we've got to find 16 pi. So... Pi, this is a radian angle. Remember those? Remember radian angles from trig? Basically, whenever they give you the pi stuff, um, 
pi radians equals how many degrees? 180 degrees. Yeah, that's what you always want to remember, right? So that, that pi is 180. You want to just stuff that in. So the pi is 180. So whenever you see pi, just pop into 180. That's always how you want to convert that. So when I see 16 pi, I think, oh, okay. Because uh, I think in terms of eight degrees, better than radians. So I just right away go 16 times 180. You can, well, of course, I was going to say you can use your calculator. <laughs> you can't use your calculator. So it's, is that what it is? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the whole screen go off. Um, I'm going to, so you could just go. Now, you can, long, you can multiply by hand, right? No, no, tell me, Ms. Taren, I can't do that anymore. You can do that, right? All right, so 6 times 0, 6 times 8, 48, 6, 10, 80. I know you gave me the answer, but um, I'm going to... I'm going to do it myself just to prove I'm not a hypocrite. It can be done. 2880. There it is. Thank you. That's right. 2880 degrees. All right. Now, so what? So, that's, so they're asking 2880 degrees. That's a bunch of 360s, isn't it? How do I know it's a bunch of 360s? Because what is 16 pi? A bunch of 2 pi's. It's 8 2 pi. So maybe really I should stop and go, look. It's actually, and this one, probably better just to stay in radians, right? 16 pi is 8, 8, 2 pi's, isn't it? So it's 8 full circles. Am I going too quick? You remember that? That's 8 full circles, right? 16 pi, 16 pi, let me write it up here. I'm kind of all over the place in this problem. 16 pi is 2 pi times 8. So it's 8 full circles, right? Because 2 pi is all the way around. 2 times 180, 360. Right? So that means that they start. Where do you start? You start here. This is zero degrees, right? We start right there. They just made that up. You could have started anywhere. Remember, it's all just made up to describe things that are real. They just say, hey, let's start right here, and up will be positive. So then they go, okay, full circle, eight times. So you go around once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times, eight times. You're right back here. So at this, what's, what's the coordinate? Remember, and it's all about the coordinates. The cosine is the x, the sine is the y. What are the coordinates of that after you've made full, eight full circles? You're, you're right back where you started. It's over zero. No, it's not. <laughs> it's over one, up zero, that dot, huh? It's the original dot. It's like we've gone nowhere, even though we've done eight full circles. It's over one, up zero. The cosine is the x, the sine is the y. What do they want? One over the cosine. So 1 over the cosine is 1 over 1. It's 1. If all that is said and done, it's 1. But your calculator could tell you much quicker. But this was more enjoyable. All right. Then more useful. There we go. That's a long, that was a long problem for the answer 1. All right. Tangent of minus pi. So I would encourage you always draw the unit circle. Find the dot that's located at minus pi. So they want the tangent of, and pi is 180, right? So that's the same thing as minus 180 degrees, right? Pi is, pi radians is 180 degrees. So now what do you do for negative angles? Positive angles, you start here, you always start here. They just, they just agreed, that'll be our starting point. Positive angles start up, going up, so negative angles go down, don't they? So you go down, rotate down, 180 degrees. So it's going to go do, 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 right to there, isn't it? Stops right here. You with me? Same thing as positive 180, really, huh? It's no difference. Same spot. If you went over the top or you went down the bottom, either way, you end up over here. So this is negative pi or negative 180. What's the coordinates? So you want the coordinates, the x, comma, y of that dot on the unit circle, radius one circle. So... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me again. So what are the coordinates of that dot? Back one, up zero. Do they want the X or do they want the Y? Yeah, they want the Y over the X, the sine over the cosine, huh? So zero over negative one is zero. And there we go. Tangent of minus pi. You can do that, right? On part one of the exam, next Wednesday, Thursday. Especially with a three-by-five card, you can write all these definitions down. Put, put one unit circle on there and put the dots, you know, if you want. Put the small, medium, large, whatever you want. All right, stop me if you have.
Okay, so sine of 60 plus cosine of 45. Sine of 60 plus cosine of 45. All right, so we want to find those values. So, so 60 degrees, it, right here, well, I'm racing ahead. I'll let you do it. So, so find the 60 degrees right there. 45 is in the middle, as you know. 45 is always the middle of 90, right? Half, half 90. So anyway, so find the coordinates of those spots, x, y, over, up. And the sine is the y coordinate, cosine is the x. <laughs> and you can find those. Over and up. So it's so this spot is over a small amount, up a large amount, isn't it? So this is over a half, up root three over two, right? And the other one is medium, medium. The medium always goes with the medium. You know, he's small and large go together and medium with medium. So there we go, right? The forty-five is you know over medium, up medium. So okay, now what do they want? Sine of the sixty. So that's the y coordinate, right? Root three over two. Good so far. Plus cosine of 45, they want the x. Of course, they're the same, doesn't really matter. So there we go. That's all they want. Type, they want an exact answer using radicals. There it is. You can make them into one. I don't care either way. You know, if you want to write root 3 plus root 2 over 2, that's the same answer. You can't combine those roots, though. So everybody knows they're unlike roots. You can't make a root 5 or something like that. It just has to stay separate. Either, either one of those is fine with me on the test. I think Matthew so will take both those as well. Is that good? They don't want decimals, though, because you would round the decimal. They want exact. Questions? We good? All right, so try that one. So you need the sine of 90 and the tan 180. So draw yourself a unit circle and find those values. So nine, so five sine ninety. So ninety straight up, right? Ninety straight up because we from the Babylonians, three sixty is a full circle. It's close to three hundred and sixty-five days. And um, straight up ninety coordinates of that spot over zero up one, right? Just x, y coordinates, right? X value is always cosine, Y value is always sine. They just defined it that way. So 5 sine 90, what's the sign? It's 1, huh? Minus 4 tan 180. So that here's 180. What's the tan? Back 1, up 0. X, Y again. Cosine is the X, sine is the Y. What's the tan? It's the sine over the cosine, or the Y over the X, however you want to say that, same thing. So it's the sine, 0 over negative 1. It's going to be 5 minus 4 times 0. It's going to be 5, huh? There we go. Questions on that? No questions, all good? All right, let's try that one. So, 8 secant of pi. So, what do you do with those pi's? What do, what do you replace pi with? 1 8. <coughs> pi is 1 8. So, when you see pi over 6, right, when you see pi over 6, stick in 180, and that's just 30 degrees. Does that make sense? When you see pi over 4, again, just stick in 180, right? You can do that in your head. It's half a 90, I mean, I mean, it is half a 90, but half a 180 is 90, and then half a 90 is 45, right? You don't need a calculator for that, right? It's half and half. Half a 180 is 90, half a 90, right? A fourth is a half and a half, right? Half, half up and half. So 
Hi before it's 45 degrees, hi before it's 30. Yeah. Right, yeah. So secant is the flip of what? Cosine, yeah, you can have those definitions on your 3 by 5 card if you're a little bit rusty on those. So yeah, I would go 8 times 1 over the cosine of, what is it, pi over 6, so 30, plus 5, and then, oh, cotan is 1 over tan, however you want to do it, I would probably just go cosine over sine, huh? Like that, for cotan. Am I going too quick? Does that make sense? Secant is 1 over cosine. And cotan is cosine over sine. Because so, you know, sine and tangent is sine on the top. Cotan is sine on the bottom. So then you can you draw the inner circle and find the cosine of 30 and the sine and cosine of 45? We're at 30 degrees right here. So it's over a large amount, up a small amount. It's over root 3 over 2, up a half. 30 degrees, right? It's over a large, up a small. The large is 1, 2, 3, 3, root 3, over 2, up a half. And then the middle one, the 45, that one's, you know, medium, medium. Root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, medium, medium. So 1 over the cosine, so... What's the cos what's the cosine of thirty? Yeah, cosine is the x, sine is the y. Don't get those reversed because normally we think of sine as coming first, but on the coordinates it's cosine that comes first, right? The x is cosine. I've seen that mistake over the years. Anyway, a uh, cosine is root three over two. And then cosine and sine of forty five are both root two over two, root two over two. Can you read my little writing there? Kind of get small. And so what do we get? What do we do with this thing? Well, you leave the 8 in the front. You grab this guy and flip him up. 2 over root 3. Flip him upside down. Plus 5 times a big old 1, right? Root 2 over 2 over root 2 over 2. That's his 1, huh? Get to there. Now, how do you do, what do you do with 8 times 2 over root 3? Yeah, multiply it, and the whole number is over 1, huh? So it goes to the top, right? So it would be 16 over root 3 plus 5. We're almost done. We can't leave a root in the bottom. So it's the last thing then is just get rid of that root from the bottom. So multiply root 3 over root 3. 16 root 3 over 3 plus 5. Yep, there it is. 16 root 3 over plane 3. Plus 5, right? Because the 2 root 3 is going to play in 3. So there we go. 16 root 3 over 3 plus 5. Is that good? Yeah. Do you think it might not take it that way? No, I just thought maybe that. I don't know why I'm thinking it, but I thought because we had to do that to one, one side of the problem that we have to do it to the 5 too. Do what's that? To the root 3 thing? Mm -hmm. Okay, no. Yeah, good question, though. Um, um, yeah, so there's two things going, two concepts going on there. Uh, so you ever hear Robert's question? It's a good one. Um, he's saying, look, if you did the root 3, root 3 thing, can you just do it to this fraction and not to the 5? Yes, I can. Because there's two, um, when you're thinking about doing something to the 5, remember there's two ways we keep balance in math. Either we do the same to the left and the right of an equal sign. I don't have one of those. It's not an equation. 
I don't have a left and a right. Or I do the same to the top and the bottom of any one item I want, right? Because if you do the same thing, I didn't, I didn't really change this 16 over root 3, did I? Because I did the same thing to the top. I mean, it looked different. Plastic surgery, I always say, it's half of what we do in math. We remove the wrinkles without it. It's still the same person. It just looks different, right? Well, if I top and bottom my root 3 here, so it looks different, but it's the same as it really was. So you can do that at any time you want. You don't have to mess with the other one. I'm just doing the same thing top and bottom, so I didn't really change it. So it's okay. Good on that. It's a good question. That's, please ask that stuff. That's exactly the kind of stuff I asked all the time. And that's how I learned algebra, ask that stuff. All right, it is. All right, so first, find where that is on the unit circle. 7 pi over 4. What do you do? Stick a 180 in for that pi, right? Find out what that angle is for stuff. 7, 180 over 4. You can do that by hand, right? I would divide first. Divide makes numbers smaller. That will be easier. You, you don't have to. You can multiply first, but it will be easier if you first divide. Well, you know 180 over 4, right? What's 180 over 4? It's half and half again, right? What's half of 180? 90. Half again? 45. So this is 7 times 45. So you can multiply that. Five times seven, twenty-two, thirty-three, three fifteen. So that's three hundred fifteen degrees. So they're basically asking about three hundred and fifteen degrees. So then go to the unit circle. And so okay, now where is three hundred and fifty? Remember, all the way around is three sixty, right? So how far is that from three sixty? Go ahead and subtract to find out how far back it is. 6 put a 5, put a 1. Remember borrowing and by hand subtraction, all that stuff? That's 45 degrees. That means it's right there, isn't it? On that. Yeah. Can you tell what the, what, how far it's going to be because of the 4 and the d6? It's going to, because yeah. of the 3, 4, and 6, it's going to be a, one of those in yeah. whatever quadrant. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Yeah, you could, you could do it this way. You could say, look, it's 7 pi's over 4. That's another way to think about it. And a pi over 4 is a 45, is, is a quarter way, right? So you could go, it's 1, these are pi's over 4. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 pi's over 4. That's a quick way. Once you get more comfortable with radians, yeah, you can just jump around that way. And that will be even quicker if you're comfortable with that. Yeah, that's right. All right, so we are, we are right here. We are sure from several angles. We are sure. That was a pun from several angles. Sorry, you know, keeping up with my, my humor. All right, from, from, from the angle, 315 degrees, we are sure. <clears throat> so find now the sine, cosine, tangent, and they want all six, don't they? Or no, they just want the sine? Oh, good, okay. Just the sine. All right, so what's, so what's the sine there? What's the coordinates? Of this point. So let me let you do that. It does. So maybe they're going to have other parts. They're just asking a sign on the first part. They'll probably do the other ones, I guess. I didn't, it didn't say, though, more parts remaining or anything. Maybe I copied it before it showed that. Whatever. We can do them all. So find the coordinates. Now, think about signs this time. Think about signs. It's over and down. It's over a medium. It's right a medium, positive a medium. Down a medium, isn't it? Everybody see that? Over and down. So positive, negative, huh? See how the signs will automatically come about? If you're just thinking about the unit circle, everything comes if you just think about the unit circle. So it's over root 2 over 2, comma, down root 2 over 2. Does that make sense on that? It's over and down, positive, negative. All right, and again, the cosine is the x, the sine is the y. So if they want the sine, it's negative root 2 over 2. Let's just do them all real quick. If they want the cosine, 
it's positive root 2 over 2 because the cosine is the x. If they want the tangent, it's sine over cosine. Those are the same thing. Negative 1, though. One of them is negative, though, right? Be negative 1. Good so far? And now we can do the six, the other three uh, reciprocal functions. So what's the upside down of sine? Cosecant. So you just flip the thing. Minus 2 over root 2. But we can't leave a root on the bottom. So multiply by root 2 over root 2. It's <coughs> minus 2 root 2 over plane 2. Oh, the 2's cancel. It's just minus root 2, huh? It's canceled out. It's minus root 2. Is that okay? What's the upside down of cosine? Secant. Right? It's going to be... Yeah, it's going to do the same kind of thing, huh? It's just going to be positive root 2. No, it's positive plane 2. You're right. Positive plane 2, huh? Right, just like this one became negative. Oh no, root two. Root two. I'm, I keep changing my mind. The two's canceled, and it was negative root two for the last one. So in the same way, this will be positive root two for that one. Good. And finally, cotan, upside down of tan. Well, that's just negative one. Upside down of one is just one. It's still negative one. So we found all six trig functions by finding the spot cotan of 315. What's the, so we, we handled the signs, positive, negative, that kind of <laughs> sign, by just realizing it was over and down, right? Positive x, negative y, just by where it's sitting on the unit circle. And that'll work fine. There is another way, which is probably a little bit easier. What's, what's the way to memorize all the signs of the six trig functions? <clears throat> where they're positive. Will that be, yeah, we'll get to Sokotoa. The, uh, what's true of you all? There it is. Thank you, Robert. All students take calculus. You've heard of that, right? That's probably the easiest way to determine those. So we'll, we'll talk more about that next time we answered this one. This is not due till later, Wednesday. What was the next 6-2? Yeah, 6-2 will be due Wednesday. Have a good day.